The deck that you're going to see in this video gave me the easiest 5-0 trophy of my life, not dropping a single game to some of the best decks in Modern. In fact, it was so easy, I'm prepared to give you a PowerPoint presentation of why you should play this deck. For anyone that doesn't know, Blue Red Murktide in Modern has been one of my favorite decks for a long time. It carried me to my first ever MTGO trophy, my first ever completely foil deck, and as of recently, the first time I've ever had to trade organs for magic cards. Nothing really gets my juices flowing more than a turn one Ragaban and then presenting the handshake to my opponent on the spot. I think Wizards really understood with the printing of this card that if it's too powerful for Legacy, it should be totally fine to hang out in Modern. I mean, who really cares if it draws cards, makes mana, and protects itself? It's still not as strong as the most powerful card of them all, the credit card. Murktide has been at the top of the modern metagame pretty much since its inception, and as of recently, has settled into the number 2 slot behind Indomitable Creativity, a deck true to its Indomitable title due to its ability to both end the game and the fun on turn 4. Now another deck that's always tickled my fancy a lot like Murktide is actually Rakdos Scam, the current third most played deck in modern. It's a deck also true to its name, built around literally scamming the opponent by playing a turn 1 Grief or Fury for its evoke cost, and feign deathing it to keep the creature around, and either double thought seizing the opponent, or just putting a thick meaty boy onto the table that needs to be dealt with. Now in creating the new list, I had an idea. What if we took the number 2 and number 3 best decks, and violently, but consensually, mashed them together to form something overpowered and really fun? Which finally brings me to the list which I'm so happy to present and title, is it scam? Because let me tell you, it most definitely is a scam. A lot like how Rakdos scam tries to keep their evoke scammy creatures with feign death, this deck tries to do the same thing, except instead of grief, we get subtlety. So we not only get the chance of keeping our thick meaty boy, but also a force of will on a flying stick. Instead of feign death, we get access to slip out the back, a card that not only allows us to keep our creature on the first turn and protects it from removal until our next turn by phasing it out, but it also can double as a removal spell for a turn if we need to connect our thick meaty boy to the opponent's face. Alongside Slip Out the Back, we also get access to Essence Flux as an additional way to bounce our creatures or to try to keep them in play on the first turn. Important to note that Slip Out the Back gives a 1-1 counter, but no additional Enter the Battlefield trigger, but Essence Flux does give the additional Enter the Battlefield trigger, but no 1-1 counter. Now, let's talk win conditions. Is it Scam plays 16 creatures that all have their own important role? Ragavan allows us to ramp, draw, and frustrate any opponent that doesn't have the turn 1 removal spell. Ledger Shredder is a flying Tarmacoif that gets triggers off of our free Evoke Elementals. Subtlety is a counter spell on a flying stick, and Fury is of course, and I can't emphasize this enough, our thick, meaty boy that also kills stuff, but like, who really cares? We also get Lightning Bolt and Fire Ice, both used to kill creatures by time or go face if we need it. Fire Ice is a really cool card because it's both a red and blue spell that pitches to subtlety and fury, as well as it taps permanents like blockers or lands if we really need it. Lightning Bolt is also really cool because it deals 3 damage anywhere and also allows me to feel like I didn't light my money and my credit score on fire. So alongside our win conditions are some counter spells, and by counter spells, I mean actual factual counter spell, and a force of will that is actually hard castable. Force of negation is fantastic in this deck because it allows us to scam our opponents on both our first turn and our opponent's first turn. Now, to make sure that the drinks are flowing and the party is going, we get to play two mana draw two that also pitches to subtlety and fury, slip out the back, which helps us slip it in the back, and essence flux to give them the suck. In terms of our lands, we get to play a very similar mana base to Blue Red Murktide. 19 lands with a couple basics, and an Ottawara just in case someone tries to out pizza the hut. And now, to run through the sideboard, we have Blood Moons for Tron, Amulet, Creativity, and Greedy Mana Bases, Season Pyromancers for Rakdos Scam, Unlicensers for Murktide and Graveyard Decks, Engineered Explosive for Hammer, Cascade, Creativity, Change the Equation for Red, Green Decks, Flusterstorm for Burn, Cascade, 
and three Orvar, because I am not losing to creativity. Before we watch the matches, I want to give a shout out to YoungPZ420 for the inspiration for this list. He's been testing a blue-green scam deck over on his Twitch channel, and he's a super wholesome magic streamer that I highly recommend you drop a follow. Also, if you want to support me on social media, check out my magic Twitter, TylerBMTG, and my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Tyler underscore B. I've been doing a lot of IRL streaming exploring New York City since I moved here back in early April, so if you enjoy random interactions with strangers from around the world, come hang out. Now let's go play the actual games. So, round number one. Round one, we keep this fantastic hand on the draw. It has a turn one fury or subtlety with a slip out the back to keep it, as well as a force negation to protect it on our opponent's turn. Our opponent plays a turn one Ragavan off of a Den of the Bugbear, meaning that this could only be a couple of decks, most likely Rakdos Scam, and we are so happy, because we have the turn one Fury. We proceed to do exactly just that, playing the Steam Bends, playing the Fury, pitching Expressive Duration, and slipping out the back in order to keep our creature around. We now have a 4-4 Double Striker, unkillable creature in play, with a Force Negation backup just in case. Our opponent proceeds to fetch for a Swamp, and Thought sees us on the first turn. Now, we could Force Negation, but there's really no point in doing this because we'd be 2 for one ourselves for a 1 for one so we just let this resolve. Our opponent takes Subtlety, which tells me they're probably going to play a creature of some sort, and they wanted to get rid of the blue card so that I couldn't cast Force Negation. So we end up just drawing another blue card for the Force Negation. So we end up attacking with the Fury, and then casting the Ragavan, and passing the turn, knowing that both our Fury and our Ragavan are safe on our opponent's turn. Our opponent Lightning Bolts the Ragavan, fetches for another basic swamp, and proceeds to cast Liliana the Veil. So, so good here. We get to force a negation this Liliana the Veil and end the game on the spot. Which is exactly what we do, ending the first game. So against Rakdos Scam, Counterspells are actually not that good, so we end up boarding out two of the Counterspells for Season Pyromancers, which are pretty much made for this matchup. Our opponent plays both Thoughtseize and Grief on the first turn, pretty much stripping us of any cards that matter and making our Counterspells pretty dead. So we end up just changing out two for two and start the next game. Round number two, we see this opening hand on the draw, and we are forced to mulligan. It has no lands, and we really do want to play some magic. Our six card hand is looking a lot better. We have a subtlety, a force negation, a slip out the back to protect it all, and a ledger shredder on the second turn if we really feel like it. So we definitely keep. So we actually bought him a land here because we can play a subtlety on the first turn and keep it with a slip out the back, as well as we also have a force negation to protect the subtlety and a second slip out the back to protect it just in case, meaning we're probably not going to end up playing the ledger shredder. So our opponent actually plays a verdant catacomb on the first turn and passes, which is the best possible scenario because now we do not have to worry about answering any creatures like a ragavan our first turn looks very similar we play a flooded strand and we pass the turn our opponent fetches on the end step getting a zira Torah's proving ground proving that this is actually not rakdos scam that we're playing against our opponent also proceeds to play a land and pass the turn and we end up drawing a fury which is not particularly great however can be very good if we end up drawing another red card so we do the same thing as our opponent we play a land and we pass the turn our opponent also plays a land and passes the turn, which is great for us because we are the counterspell deck. We end up drawing a second subtlety, which is actually not that good, however it can be useful if we do get this letter shredder out into play, but we end up just passing the turn. Our opponent plays a forest, cracks a fetch land, gets a basic swamp, and casts a renin six, which is great for us right here because now we get to subtlety and slip out the back the subtlety, as well as have a backup slip out the back to protect our subtlety and a force negation. So we do exactly that, and our opponent, in response to the triggers, fetches, shocks themselves to the stomping ground, passes priority, so we fetch for a steam vents, shocking ourselves. We cast the slip out the back, and our opponent goes for a terminate, which is amazing, because now we get to slip out the back and keep our creature around, as well as still have the force negation or subtlety backup. We fetch for a basic island, slip out the back as we should, and then we untap and draw counter spell. Beautiful. Now we have three different counter spell effects that we get to hold up, and subtlety should hopefully just run away with this game. We get into the red zone and pass the turn. Our opponent goes for a second Renna Six. Now we have a choice. We can either force negation, subtlety, 
or counterspell. But we proceed to counterspell because subtlety and force negation actually cover all of our bases, and we want to use our mana as efficiently as possible. And then our opponent goes for a Tarmogoyf. Now we do have the ability to subtlety this. However, our opponent's on a three turn clock. We don't really care. We untap, we draw fire ice, we get into the red zone, we allow our opponent to make an attack, and then our opponent casts a second Tarmogoyf. Now things are looking a little interesting. The second Tarmogoyf actually doesn't change anything at the current moment, but then they go for a third Tarmogoyf. Now, if they're able to get two more card types into the grave, we actually lose on the following turn. But because we have the Fire Ice, we let it resolve, knowing that we can tap one of the Tarmogoyfs on their combat step. We draw a Spire Bluff Canal, which is great. Now we can play the Spire Bluff Canal, hold up the Fire Ice, and potentially even draw a one-mana spell. We attack them for four because we know that they're on a two-turn clock, and our opponent goes for a main phase one fury. Perfect for us. We just so happen to have the subtlety to pitch. They have one card in hand. I'm not really afraid of very much. So we subtlety, pitch the force of negation so we can hold up the fire ice so we can tap down one of these goifs just in case they happen to have a last card lightning bolt. We ice one of the tarma goifs at the beginning of combat, and the opponent concedes the game giving us a solid 2-0 against Jund. Off to round number two. So round number two on the play, I end up deciding to keep this hand. I figure that if I play the turn on the Ragavan and it doesn't get killed, we obviously can run away with the game. And if it does get killed, we have a second backup Ragavan that we can dash, assuming that we don't end up drawing another two-minute spell. So we, of course, play our Ragavan on turn one and pass the turn. Our opponent ends up playing a Scalding Tarn, fetches for an untapped Steam Vents, and conflagrates for zero, telling me that they are most definitely on dredge, but we're also going to be able to connect with this Ragavan. We proceed to draw a force negation for turn, which is actually quite good, because it's going to be able to counter any of their two mana discard draw card spells. We get into the red zone, and exile a Stinkwee nip off the top, which we're most definitely not going to cast, and we would much rather remain in exile. And then I proceed to expressive iteration. My thought process was, we haven't played our land drop for the turn, so if we do exile a land, we can play it. And additionally, all we need to do is find one blue card in the top three, and our force negation is still live. I proceed to take Subtlety because having Force Negation and Subtlety as two of my choices is really nice, and then I end up exiling Essence Flux, which in retrospect is probably a misplay. And here I end up playing the basic land and casting the Essence Flux. My thought process being, if I use my mana here, my opponent might actually cast one of their Sorcery Speed draw spells on their main phase, thinking I have no counter magic up when I actually have the Force Negation. So the opponent plays a Scalding Tarn, and cracks them for a Blood Crypt shocking themselves, meaning they're most likely going to go for a turn 2 play. And they proceed to cast Cathartic Reunion, discarding a Creeping Chill and a City of Brass, having zero dredgers in the grave. This tells me that they are desperately digging for a dredge card. So we proceed to Force Negation, pitching the Subtlety. We can't allow them to draw cards, we can't allow them to get any deeper towards a dredge spell. We then untap and draw an Expressive Iteration, which is fantastic. Now, if we get nothing off this Ragavan, at least we have more draws. We get into the red zone with Ragavan, and proceed to hit a Thrilling Discovery, an actually castable card. So we end up casting the Thrilling Discovery. We end up pitching a Ragavan and a Scalding Tarn. My thought process was, we were going to cast Expressive Iteration anyway, so we might as well get the value out of their Thrilling Discovery and draw some cards. We end up drawing Fury and Essence Flux, which is actually quite a good draw. If our opponent ends up getting some Dredgers into the grave, it ends up getting some creatures into play, we're going to be able to Fury and bounce the Fury again, hopefully wiping the board and potentially winning the game. And additionally, if we can get this Fury into play as a 3-3 Double Striker, we can end the game very quickly. So I proceed to shock myself and pass the turn with the idea that I'm going to be able to have a Lightning Bolt and an Essence Flux up in case they try to conflagrate my Ragavan. I really want to keep this Ragavan alive. It's getting me value out of their cards. It's getting me mana so I can cast my spells. I want to do anything that I can to keep this Ragavan alive, even if it meant not getting the Fury into play this turn. The opponent goes for a Cathartic Reunion, discarding a Mana Confluence and a Steam Vents, which is a giant sigh of relief. They still are not able to find a Dredger, and they're probably just going to end up passing, doing nothing this turn. The opponent plays a tapped Sacred Foundry and passes the turn, exactly like we wanted. 
And what do you know? We end up drawing Counterspell, probably the best draw in the deck. Now we can attack with the Ragavan, we can cast the Express Evaluation, we can hold up Counterspell, the world is our oyster. We end up getting a Creeping Chill off the Ragavan, no point in casting that, we would much rather hold up the Counterspell. And we cast Express Evaluation here, we have the mana, if we hit a land, we're able to play a land and hold up the Counterspell and Essence Flux or Lightning Bolt or whatever we get, and we do hit the land. We take the Fire Ice because it's the most versatile out of the cards. It's able to tap something if we need it. It's able to deal some direct damage if we need to end the game. And we put the Steam Vents in Exile, which we know we're going to play. But now I have a decision to make. I can either hold up Essence Flux, Lightning Bolt, Counterspell, and Fire and Ice, or I could try to get this Fury into play and go for Lethal. Our opponent is at 8. We have 2 power with the Ragavan, and a 3-3 Double Striker would end the game the next turn. So I decided to cast the Fury, pitching the Fire Ice. So the Fury comes into play, we end up Essence Fluxing it to keep it around, and we pass with Counterspell and Lightning Bolt back up. We feel great, there's really not much that our opponent can do. They attempt to Conflagrate, dealing 1 damage to Ragavan, 3 to Fury, and we have the Counterspell, they have 0 cards in hand, the game is ours. And the opponent concedes to the Counterspell, as they should. Sideboarding for match number 2 against Dredge, I figured that Subtlety and Lightning Bolt were the least impactful spells on my deck. Subtlety doesn't really counter very much, and if they're casting their Dredgers, I'm probably winning that game. And Lightning Bolt doesn't really kill very much. It can kill the creatures that can come back from their grave, and it can go face, which can be effective sometimes. But generally, I don't want to be killing their creatures, I want to be stopping them before they're able to get ahead like that. So I decided to bring in Flusterstorm, change the equation, and license her since he's in Pyromancer. I figured that Flusterstorm is able to counter some of their early draw spells. Change the equation can also hit some of their early draw spells. Unlicensed Hearse is the only graveyard hate that I really have and is super, super important. And Season Pyromancer can be good if they do happen to pop off and get some creatures in play. It can create some blockers as well as potentially dig me closer to the cards that I do want to see. Game 2 on the draw, we keep this opening hand. We have a Flusterstorm that's castable, a Force Negation that's castable, and if we happen to draw the land, we can jam the Unlicensed Hearse on the second turn. Our opponent just goes Bloodstain Mire Pass, and we draw a second Force Negation. Not the worst draw since it is castable, and we're most likely going to be casting these Force Negations. We play a land and pass the turn, and our opponent fetches for a tap Blood Crypt on the end step. Our opponent plays a Sacred Foundry untapped, our opponent casts Cathartic Reunion, discarding Golgari Thug and Steam Vents, meaning they're probably going to dredge off of one of these draws. We proceed to cast Flusterstorm instead of one of the Force Negations, because the Flusterstorm is a 3 for 1, and additionally we get to hold onto these Force Negations for later turns. And what do you know, on our second turn we rip the land off the top, we jam the Unlicensed Hearse as fast as humanly possible, and immediately activate it targeting the Golgari Thug and some other random card to make sure that they do not dredge for their draw step. We are so far ahead now, we're probably going to win this game with two Force Negations and an Unlicensed Hearse. We are on top of the world. Our opponent proceeds to cast Prismatic Ending, X equaling 1, and it's just so lucky that we have two Force Negations back up for this. We Force Negation pitch a Letter Shredder since we do have two, and we draw a Fire Ice for turn, which is not the worst, but not the best. It is another blue card to pitch the Force Negation, but we don't currently have any threats in play, and we definitely want to get something going. So I cast Express Iteration here. My thought process being, well, we're missing our third land drop, so maybe we hit a third land. And additionally, maybe we end up finding more interactive spells? And we just so happen to hit the third land, and a Fury or Season Pyromancer, with the Season Pyromancer looking particularly good. We put the Misty Rainforest into Exile, put the Season Pyromancer in a hand, play our land, and pass the turn. The opponent in their main phase 1 goes for a second prismatic ending that we just so happen to have the second force negation. Force negation is proving to be one of the best cards in this deck, and I'm so happy that we're playing 4. I end up pitching Letter Shredder. I figure that I'm going to be casting Season Pyromancer most likely next turn anyway, and Season Pyromancer is able to activate the Unlicensors on its own, as well as draw me cards and make me a board presence that we really need. We draw and play a Scalding Tarn for turn, and I end up deciding last minute to not play the Season Pyromancer. I figure that my opponent seems to be really stuck on lands as they haven't played any lands these past couple of turns, and if I'm able to just tap down one of their lands on the upkeep, they're not going to be able to use any of their discard draw spells. So we might actually be able to essentially time walk them here. So we cast the Ice targeting the Blood Crypt, I figure that the black mana probably matters a little bit more than the white mana. We draw a Misty Rainforest, and then we F6 through the turn. 
I end up cracking the fetch land on the end step. I really don't want to draw any more lands, and I don't mind taking a damage to thin out the deck a little bit. And then we exile the last two cards from their graveyard, because it's free. We end up untapping and drawing the second unlicensed hearse. How lucky can we get? We're going to be able to play our land, play the unlicensed hearse, and the season pyromancer drawing two cards. That was actually probably the nut of our deck. We play the second Unlicensed Hearse, cast the Season Pyromancer, and draw a land and a second Season Pyromancer. Some great fuel for the next turn. The opponent ends up passing for their entire turn doing nothing with their mana, meaning that we are going to be able to untap the Season Pyromancer. I end up activating a Unlicensed Hearse targeting my own graveyard. Luckily, our graveyard doesn't really mean anything, and we want to get this Unlicensed Hearse big enough that we're able to kill them in two turns. And I end up not activating the second Unlicensers just in case they somehow are able to get cards into the grave, like a Thrill of Possibility, and they start dredging. We untop and draw a Fury. Doesn't particularly help us. So we play our Spire Bluff Canal and cast a Season Pyromancer, discarding the Fury, and look at what we draw. Counterspell. We are so set up to win this game. We have two Graveyard Exile cards. We have a Board Presence. We have a Counterspell. This game looks unlosable. I end up crewing the Unlicensed Hearse this turn. I figure that I can deal 8 damage this turn, putting them to 9, and essentially putting them on a 2 turn clock right now. And we additionally have the second Unlicensed Hearse backup, just in case they end up doing some graveyard shenanigans. We go to combat, we get into the red zone, we put them to 9, and we end up passing the turn. And right there on the second main phase, our opponent concedes the match, and we are 2-0 in this league with Is It Scam. Off to round number 3. We're on the play in round number three, and we keep this opening hand. It has a turn one Ragavan, it has a force negation to back it up, it has a fury just in case. This hand is actually really good, and once again, force negation looking awesome. We of course play the Ragavan and pass the turn. Our opponent plays Black Thief Cliffs on the first turn, and then casts Fury pitching Terminate. They're definitely on scam, and we don't have a really good answer for this Fury, except the Fury in our hand. And then they cast on Dying Evil, targeting the Fury, giving us two options. We can either Force Negation pitching the Fire Ice, or we can Fury pitching the Fire Ice, both answering the Fury cleanly. However, if we happen to draw a slip out the back, we're going to be able to keep our Fury as a 4-4 Double Striker, and potentially out-scam the Scam deck. So I end up letting the Undying Evil resolve, and crossing my fingers and toes that we end up drawing an Essence Flux or a slip out the back. And what do you know on my draw step? We draw the slip out the back. And we are going to absolutely blow this scam player out of the water. Scamming the scam. We play the land, cast the fury, target it with slip out the back, and bam. The fury is gone and we are so far ahead. Next turn, we're going to be able to play this land, hold up a force negation, and probably just run away with the game. Our opponent plays a tap blood crypt and passes the turn. And we just so happen to draw an expressive iteration. How great is that? We play our misty, we go to combat. We get Fury into the red zone, putting him on a three turn clock, and pass the turn with Force Negation up. Our opponent plays a Castle Lockthwain, and casts Grief, pitching Grief. This is actually quite bad for us, there's nothing we can do about this. If they have an Undying Evil, they're going to end up taking both the cards out of our hand, and then cast a Feign Death, exactly what we were worried about, stripping us of the last card in our hand. We go to our turn, we untap, and we draw a counter spell, probably one of the better draws in our deck. This Fury now is going to be able to connect at least this turn, and if they have an answer or they draw one, we're going to have the counter spell back up. We're probably going to win this game. We go to combat, we get in the red zone with the Fury, and then pass the turn. Our opponent untaps, draws, and then dash casts a Ragavan, a very interesting play. So we can either counter spell this or not, but I let it resolve. I figure the only thing I'm worried about is a removal spell for Fury. They go to combat and attack with just the Ragavan, which is a pretty smart play. They want to hold up the Grief. Ragavan connects and hits a counter spell. That does absolutely nothing. They can't even cast it. Our opponent ends up playing the Bloodstone Mire and passing the turn with just the Grief up. We know that we're going to enter combat, attack with the Fury. They're going to block with the Grief. And we're just going to pray that they just continue to draw nothing. We go to combat. We swing with the Fury. They end up blocking with the Grief. We play the Flooded Strand and we pass the turn. The opponent cracks the Bloodstain Mire in the end step, getting a tap Blood Crypt to thin out the deck. Regular casts the Ragavan, and then passes the turn. The untap and draw of Force Negation, not the worst draw, but not the best. It's essentially another counter spell, but we're only really going to be able to cast one. So we go to combat with Fury, we attack, knowing that they're about to chump block with the Ragavan. And then they proceed to cast Feign Death on the Ragavan, their last card in their hand. Now we have an option. We can either Force Negation, counter spell this, or we can do nothing. I figure that... 
They have one draw step to draw something that's relevant. I might as well let this resolve just in case they end up drawing like a Terminate. We go to damage, Ragavan ends up coming back, and the opponent attempts to cast Season Pyromancer. Now, we luckily have the Counterspell. We Counterspell the Season Pyromancer, can't let them draw cards, get deeper. We go to our turn, we draw an island, we end up going right to combat, getting in the red zone with the Fury, knowing they're about to chump. The opponent chump blocks to the Ragavan. We play the island, we pass for turn. The opponent f 6 is the turn. That means they're most definitely going to flashback the Season Pyromancer and put two 1-1s one -ones into play to block. We go to combat, we get into the red zone with a Fury, they flash back the Season Pyromancer just like we thought, and then they chump block and we pass the turn. The opponent goes to their turn, draws a card, and draws nothing, and proceeds to concede the game. We are off to game number two. Following the same philosophy that I did in match number one, match number three against Rakdos Scam, I decided to cut the counter spells for Season Pyromancer and Unlicensed Hearse. Counterspell again, not good against Thoughtseize, not good against Grief, ends up rotting in our hand where they end up taking all the good cards from it. Season Pyromancer is made for Rakdos Scam matchups, and Unlicensed Hearse is actually quite good against Rakdos Scam. It's able to break up the Fame Death combo, and it's also quite difficult for them to kill. It only dies to Fatal Push and Coligon's Command and Terminate, and doesn't really die to anything else. And if we're able to get it into play and really start eating up the graveyards, it can be a win condition on its own. Game number two on the draw, our opening hand is pretty good. We have Force Negation and Subtlety, both which are castable, and a slip out the back to keep the subtlety around. Our opponent goes for a turn one Ragavan, and it's actually quite a good card against us right now. We could subtlety it, but they're probably just going to put it on top, and that doesn't get us very far, and we don't have a turn one answer. I end up letting the Ragavan resolve, hoping that I'll draw a turn one answer, but we end up missing on that. So I'm just going to let it connect with me for one turn, and then attempt to fire it. I play my land for turn and say go. The opponent enters combat, attacks with Ragavan, of course, and we have to let it connect. We don't have a choice. We could slip out the back if we really wanted to not take the damage from the Ragavan, but I figure, you know what, what's the worst they could possibly hit? And the opponent hits a Seasoned Pyromancer, which they do proceed to cast almost immediately, and we are forced to subtlety it, which is actually not the worst because we do have to slip out the back. Now we're going to be able to keep our subtlety around as a 4-4, and we get to put the Season Pyromancer back on top of her deck if we choose or on bottom. We cast a slip out the back, and I choose to put Season Pyromancer on top of my deck. I figure that Season Pyromancer is pretty much made for the Rakdos scam matchup, and if we are able to get a land, we're going to be able to cast it and probably take over the game by flooding the board. We of course draw the Season Pyromancer and choose not to attack. I think I would rather hold up the Subtlety as a blocker, and even if they do have a Lightning Bolt, we can just slip out the back the Subtlety and keep it around. And then the opponent attempts to cast a Terminate on their main phase, putting us in a very interesting position. We have two choices. We can Force Negation, or we can slip out the back. And I go for the Force Negation, pitching the Fire Ice. I figure that I want to be able to hold up the slip out the back in the future in case they draw another removal spell for the Subtlety. And I also want to be able to block the Ragavan. If I cast a slip out the back, it's going to phase out the Subtlety, and I'm not going to be able to answer the Ragavan connecting my face. And then the opponent evokes Fury, pitching Obnixilis. This is actually amazing for us. Realistically, Ragavan is not going to hit anything good for one mana, and we essentially get to two for one them here. We cast a slip out the back, targeting the subtlety. The opponent goes to combat, swings with the Ragavan. Of course, we can't do anything about it, and it connects. And Ragavan hits on Licensors. Not a very good card. They could potentially cast it, but it doesn't really do anything against us. And then the opponent passes the turn. And we draw a Lightning Bolt for a turn. Quite an interesting draw. It allows us to attack with the subtlety and be able to lightning bolt the Ragavan if we really want to. However, that's not particularly good if they have a feign death. I tank for a bit and decide I need to start closing out this game. My opponent is at 20 life. I have a 5-5 in play. They're on a four turn clock and it's going to be quite difficult to kill this subtlety. My opponent untaps draws and casts Dalty Voidwalker, an annoying card in this scenario. My thought process was, I was going to Lightning Bolt this Ragavan at the beginning of combat because I didn't want it to hit me. However, now that they're casting the Dalty Voidwalker, I can't cast the Lightning Bolt after it resolves, or they're going to be able to use their Dalty Voidwalker to flash back my Lightning Bolt, and if they have another Lightning Bolt in their hand, they're going to be able to kill my Subtlety. So basically, I'm forced to use this Lightning Bolt on their Ragavan right now, risking the chance that they have another Dash Ragavan, because I do not want them to have this Lightning Bolt in Exile. So I proceed to cast a Lightning Bolt targeting the Ragavan. It resolves, and then the Dalty Voidwalker resolves, and then they pass the turn. 
We untap and we get very lucky with our draw. We draw a basic land, meaning that we're going to be able to cast this season Pyromancer. We crack the fetch land right away, getting a Steam Vents into play untapped. We swing with the subtlety. And on main phase two, we play our basic land. We cast the season Pyromancer, drawing two cards, discarding none, and pass the turn. Our opponent passes right through their first main phase, enters combat, attacks a Dalty Voidwalker. We take three damage since it has shadow, and they pass the turn. We untap and we draw subtlety. Not that great of a draw, actually, because in order for us to play it, we're going to need to shock ourselves down to five. And with a Dalty Voidwalker in play, that represents lethal if they have a Lightning Bolt in the hand. So we proceed to dash cast the Ragavan because we want to get in as much damage as we possibly can. And then I make the decision to swing out. I can't block the Shadow Creature. I don't really care if they have a Ragavan in hand. I need to get them as low as I possibly can, be able to turn off their fetch lands. We put them to one life. Ragavan hits Thought Seize, which is pretty unplayable because we didn't want to take damage from the Steam Vents, so we can't really cast the Thought Seize. So we just play the Tap Steam Vents and say go. Our opponent untaps, goes to main phase, and concedes the match. We are 3-0, not losing a game with Is It Scam. All right, round number four. Round number four, we're on the play, and we have a pretty good opening hand. We have a Force Negation, we have a Lightning Bolt, we have Counterspell, we have Fury, all of these cards which are pretty castable, and who knows what we'll draw off the top. We proceed to play a Spire Bluff and pass the turn. Our opponent plays turn one Xander's Lounge, which is quite interesting because there are not many decks in Modern that play Xander's Lounge. This pretty much tells me that they're most likely on some sort of five color deck, or maybe even Indomitable Creativity. We end up drawing a second Spire Bluff Canal, not a bad draw, it's going to be our land for turn, but we play a Spire Bluff Canal and pass the turn. Our opponent draws, plays a Bloodstained Mire, and on the second main phase ends up fetching for Jetmere's Garden, telling us they are most definitely playing a five color deck. We untap, we draw Letter Shredder, not the worst draw because we do kind of want to get a threat going, however it does die to a Lightning Bolt. So we proceed to follow our opponent and we just pass the turn with our banana. Our opponent plays Wooded Foothills and then casts Ren in six. We now have a choice. We can cast Force of Negation, we can cast Counterspell, we could let it resolve, but that's probably not very good. And we proceed to fetch for a basic and actually hard cast the Force of Negation. It's the best use of our mana, and we would rather not two for one ourselves if we don't have to. We untap and we draw Ragavan. Definitely a good draw. It allows us to play it for one mana and hold up Counterspell or Fire Ice. We end up passing the turn and the opponent cracks Wooded Foothills in the end step gets an untapped Sacred Foundry, and casts Leyline Binding. Now, we could counterspell this, however, knowing that they're most likely on Indomitable Creativity, if they play a Fetch Land and put a Dwarf into play, and they cast Indomitable Creativity, we will have no answer, so we're forced to let this resolve. Leyline Binding enters, targets Ragavan, and we pass the turn. So the opponent untaps and immediately attempts to cast a Renin 6. We definitely cannot let Renin 6 resolve. We have a Fury that answers it, but Renin 6 is going to start generating value and allowing them to hit their land drops, and I really don't want that to happen. So we cast the Counterspell, and the opponent plays a Dwarven Mine, making a 1-1, and then passes the turn. We untap and we draw a Counterspell. Actually quite a good draw. We didn't have any more Counterspells. We already had a lot of answers for creatures. So we now are just really looking for a land so we can do multiple spells in one turn. We end up just passing the turn. The opponent shocks in a Stomping Ground and proceeds to cast a Fairy, a must-answer card that we're forced to Counterspell. Otherwise, we're never going to be able to answer their tokens at instant speed or ever counter a spell again. We Counterspell to Fairy. And then they proceed enter combat and attack us for one, then passing the turn. We untap and we draw Fiery Islet, which is actually not a bad draw. It allows us to play our Ledger Shredder and hold up one of our burn spells. We play Fiery Islet and cast Ledger Shredder. We pass the turn and the opponent goes for Leyline Binding. We have to let this resolve. We have no answer for it. There's no reason to cast anything and get a trigger. The opponent untaps and proceeds to cast a second to Fairy which is absolutely killer on this board. We don't have a good answer for it, however, we do have a lot of burn in hand. Teferi resolves in A+, keeping it out of bolt range, and proceeds to enter combat and attack us for one. So we untap and we draw Express Iteration. We're in quite a difficult position. Teferi is at 5 loyalty, they have a 1-1 one -one in play, we need to be able to remove the Teferi as well as the Dwarf token. So our options to get rid of both things involve Pitch casting Fury as well as Fire. 
Fury will deal four, Fire will deal two, that's a total of six damage. However, we're going to be left with one card in hand. I end up casting the Expressive Iteration. I figure that if I hit another red card that I want to pitch for the Fury, that means I can keep the Lightning Bolt in case they go for another Dwarven Mine and Indomitable Creativity. We end up seeing two fetch lands and a subtlety, probably some of the worst cards that we could see. We do hit our land for the turn, but that doesn't really mean anything, and the subtlety is pretty uncastable since we're going to have to fire and fury. We put the subtlety in hand, the Misty Rainforest in exile, we play the Misty, and proceed to do our play of fury, deal four, and fire, deal two, and we pass the turn. The opponent surprisingly passes through their full turn doing nothing and we get to untap with a subtlety in hand. We draw a fetch land for turn, and decide to crack the fiery islet. With the land that we drew, we knew that we were going to have enough lands to be able to cast the subtlety, and you never know what we're going to draw. And we just so happen to draw slip out the back, which actually might be useful if we untap with this 5 mana. The opponent again passes their full turn, and leaves us with an interesting decision. Do we want to flash in the subtlety and start beating them down? I decided the end step, I want to start thinning out my deck so we can hit some good draws. I crack for two fetch lands, put them into play tapped, and then pass priority. We untap and we draw a second subtlety, which is actually not a bad draw. Now, if we want to, we can just throw down a subtlety on their end step and start beating down. And we also have the slip out the back to protect it, or we can just hold them both up. We pass the turn, and the opponent once again with five cards in hand passes their turn meaning we're put in the same position again, and I decide, screw it, we need to get a clock going, I cast a subtlety. We untap and we draw Ledger Shredder. Definitely not a bad draw, but a little awkward if we want to hold up hard cast subtlety. We immediately go to combat, we enter the red zone with subtlety, deal our three damage, and then pass the turn. The opponent, once again, passes their full turn, and we just go to our untap and draw a Spire Bluff Canal. We go to combat, we swing for three, and our opponent cast a leyline binding which is awesome because we have the slip out the back in hand to protect our subtlety we cast the slip out the back and then proceed to pass the turn with a subtlety up the opponent once again passes their turn and we untap and draw fury not a great draw doesn't really do very much here but we do have a 4-4 flyer we enter combat we attack for four they're on a three turn clock we then proceed to cast a ledger shredder because we do have the four open mana for the subtlety and our opponent on our end step goes for a Lightning Bolt on Ledger Shredder. Now we're in a really interesting spot. We can actually cast this Subtlety for no value, getting a Ledger Shredder trigger, keeping it alive by discarding the Fury. Which is exactly what we end up doing. I really want to keep this Ledger Shredder alive. Now they're on a one turn clock. We discard the Fury. We have 7-9 power in play. We are in such a good spot as long as they don't Indomitable Creativity. Our opponent draws, plays a land, casts a prismatic ending on our one subtlety, passes the turn, we enter combat, we swing for five, we have a force of negation in hand from our draw step, we're feeling really far ahead, there's not much that they can do, we go to the main phase and they concede. So this is the part of the video where I have to admit that I might have added too many cards to my sideboard for Indomitable Creativity. I guess I really didn't want to lose to Indomitable Creativity, but... I figure, you know what, I have the cards, I might as well use them. I ended up boarding out for match number 4, all the Fire Ices, all the Essence Flux, a couple Furies, a Ledger Shredder, and a Lightning Bolt. I don't really know what I should have boarded out. I figure that Fire Ice is only really good against the 1-1 tokens and not so much anything else. Maybe a Town's Down and Archon, but like, is that really good? Fury is like, only good if we're able to scam them on turn 1, but they also play Leyline Binding. And it's also a sorcery speed way of answering things, which is not very good. Essence Flux is kind of worse than Slip Out the Back. It doesn't give a 1-1 counter. It does give us an additional ETB effect, but I figure we might as well cut down on the scam stuff because we're going to be bringing in a lot of value cards. And I cut a Lightning Bolt and a Ledger Shredder because I wasn't really sure what to cut. Lightning Bolt doesn't really hit very much. It's like okay against the tokens. It's okay at going face. And then the Ledger Shredder is a bit clunky. It's not so good against Lightning Bolts and Leyline Bindings if they're able to time them really well. And I just think that they're generally pretty slow. Orvar, specifically made for this matchup, Change the Equation hits Renin 6, it hits Indomitable Creativity, it hits so many different cards. 
Engineered Explosives answers all the tokens in the deck. And Blood Moon, I mean, they are a greedy five color mana base. We might be able to just get them. We're on the draw in game number two against Indomitable Creativity. And we have a pretty good opening hand. We have a subtlety with Slip Out the Back to protect it and keep it in play. We have Engineered Explosives for their tokens. And we even have a Ledger Shredder that we won't be able to get a trigger out of. Our opponent plays Wood of the Hills and passes the turn. We untap draw, play a Spire Bluff Canal that we just drew and pass the turn. Our opponent cracks on the end step and gets a Jet Mirror's Garden and passes. Our opponent untaps, draws, and proceeds to play Scalding Tarn and pass priority for the turn. So we go to untap and we draw a basic, not very helpful. We play the basic land and pass the turn, which our opponent cracks a Scalding Tarn in the end step and gets Sanders Lounge tapped and then passes priority again. The opponent untaps, draws, plays Aramesa, and once again passes the turn. We untap, we draw Spire Bluff Canal. We're now in an interesting spot because we have to play the Engineered Explosives now if we're interested in being able to answer tokens. And then I cast the Engineered Explosives, which in retrospect I think is actually a misplay because I did want to cast the Ledger Shredder this turn. So if we had played the Ledger Shredder first and then the Engineered Explosives, we would have gotten a trigger here. The opponent lets the Engineered Explosive resolve, and then casts Leyland Binding on the end step, which actually is quite good for us, and I'm quite happy I didn't play the Ledger Shredder. Because if I had played the Ledger Shredder, we wouldn't have enough mana to be able to play the Subtlety and hold up both the slip out the backs. Leyland Binding enters, it targets Engineered Explosives, and then we pass priority. The opponent untaps, plays a tap Steam Vents, and then passes the turn. We untap and draw Ragavan, which is quite good. We play a land for turn, cast the Ragavan, and attempt to pass the turn. The opponent on our end step casts Lightning Bolt targeting Ragavan, and I choose to let it resolve because I want to be able to pitch cast this Subtlety and hold up both slip out the backs, thinking that the Subtlety might be able to run away with the game. The opponent goes to untap, draws, and then casts to Fairy Time Raveler. This is the perfect scenario that we were looking for. We cast the Subtlety, pitching the Ledger Shredder, target the Teferi, cast slip out the back, target the Subtlety, the slip out the back resolves, and the opponent passes the turn. We get to untap with a 4-4 flyer. We untap, we draw change the equation, which is awesome. It's able to answer so many different spells the opponent could play. We enter combat, we attack for 4, they allow us to connect, and then we pass the turn. The opponent untaps, draws, and casts Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We immediately change the equation it. We don't want them to get any value going. We're winning with this 4-4 on the board. We have the protection spell for the subtlety. We don't want them doing anything. It resolves and they pass the turn. We untap and we draw Ragavan, which is an awesome draw. Now we have another creature that we can beat their face with. The opponent fetches for a Dwarven Mine, puts a 1-1 into play, and then they proceed to block the Ragavan. I think I'm okay with this trade. I don't really want them to Indomitable Creativity anytime soon. I could slip out the back of my Ragavan, but I think I would rather the 1-1 token die. We go to damage and then we pass the turn. The opponent untaps, plays a tap stomping ground, and then passes the turn. We untap, draw a land, not very useful, immediately go to combat, and attack for four. We play the land, pass the turn, the opponent untaps, draws, and casts Ren in six. We don't have an answer for it, but it's not very good. It resolves, they plus target a land, I decide on the end step that I want to thin my deck, I search for both my steam vents and the last basic, and we proceed to draw Blood Moon. Now, the game is almost over, they're at five health, they have one fetch land in play, that equals five damage, but the Blood Moon should cinch the game. It should close out their mana and make it really difficult for them to ever come back. We go to combat, we attack for four, hope it connects, it does. And in the second main phase, we cast the Blood Moon. Our opponent in response casts a Spell Pierce, which we most definitely are going to pay for. We have the mana and we're able to hold up the slip out the back. We pay the two, they Spell Pierce the Blood Moon again, and then we pass the turn. The opponent untaps, they draw, they crack their own fetch land, and that's the match. We are 4-0 and oh, off to the last round. All right, the last and final round. We're on the play for round number 5, and we have a very interesting opening hand. So we have no turn 1 play besides the Fury, which is going to die. However, we do have a lot of draw spells. The Fury is castable, and... A turn 2 Ledger Shredder with a Fury to potentially put a counter on the Ledger Shredder is quite good. And if our opponent does go turn 1 nothing and we're able to untap with a second mana, I think that we're ahead with this hand, so I decide to keep. I play Spire Buff Canal and say go, and the opponent plays a Mountain and says go. 
I'm not particularly sure what they're on. Maybe it's burn with a really slow start, but I'm thinking they're probably holding up a lightning bolt. We draw a force negation for turn, which is actually quite good. It's another free spell that we're able to play just in case. But I decide to play the Scolding Tarn and pass the turn. I don't want to play Ledger Shredder on top of my mana and then have it die to a Lightning Bolt. I can't really cast the Expressive Iteration if I want to hold up a counter spell, so it's safer for me to just pass. The opponent again plays a Mountain and says go, and now I'm really confused what they're on. We draw a Subtlety for turn. Again, another good draw, kind of like the Force Negation, but we're kind of stuck on lands, so it's time to play one of these Expressive Iterations. We fetch for the basic play EI. And EI shows us the nuts. We have an untapped Spire Bluff Canal, we have a Ragavan that cast off of it, and we have a Force of Negation and Subtlety backup for their turn. We play the Spire Bluff, we play the Ragavan, we say go. And on our end step, they play Spike Field Hazard. Now I really don't know what they're playing. I know that Goblin Charbelcher plays Spike Field, but they have two mountains in play. I'm thinking they're playing like Indomitable Creativity that's in Pioneer. The Spike Field Hazard resolves, they go to their untap, they draw. They play a mountain, and then they cast a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which we are most definitely going to Force of Negation. We go to our turn, we draw another Force of Negation. Fantastic, allows us to be able to play our things and not really worry about what they do. We decide to cast the Expressive Iteration, see if we can hit a land drop. We do. We exile the Scalding Tarn, we take the Lightning Bolt, we play the land, and we say go. The opponent then plays a Blast Zone for a turn. Still no idea what's going on. And then proceeds to cast a Ragavan Dashed. We luckily have the Lightning Bolt for the Ragavan. We cast it, it dies, and then they pass the turn. We go to untap, we draw, and we get another Fury. We decide to play the Ledger Shredder because we do have a Counterspell and a Force of Negation backup. And then we pass the turn. The opponent untaps, they draw, they cast a Lightning Bolt target the Ledger Shredder, and we let it resolve. I figure that I don't really want to use my one counter spell on a lightning bolt because if we're able to draw another land, we might be able to hard cast these furies and run away with the game that way. But then they cast a relic of Frigenitus. Now I'm starting to get an idea of what they're doing. They're playing a mono red free wind deck. It's more popular in Legacy where they're able to play Trinisphere and a bunch of lands that make two mana. But their goal is to play cards like Ragavan and Relic of Progenitus and Fable of the Mirror Breaker, really, really high value cards, and hopefully steal free wins. Now, I actually have a lot of experience with these kinds of decks, and I don't think that they're very good in modern at the moment, but I could be proven wrong. The opponent plays the Relic, activates it, and then passes the turn. They then, on the end step, activate the Relic of Regenitus, because I assume they want, want to play around Murktide, which we do not have. We draw, we play a Ledger Shredder that we just drew for turn, and then we pass the turn with the counter spell back up. Our opponent casts a Flame Slash, which I choose not to counter spell, because once again, I don't really care about the Ledger Shredder. They can do a one for one if they really want, and then they cast a second Relic of Progenitus. They proceed to activate it, we get over our Ledger Shredder, whatever, and then they pass the turn. We untap, we draw a Subtlety, which is quite good. We can hard cast the Subtlety. We have Force of Negation, Subtlety, Counterspell all up. Our opponent then casts a Blood Moon, which is hilarious because Blood Moon isn't even good against us. We're actually a Blood Moon deck. We fetch for the basic land. The, we let the Blood Moon resolve with all of our Counterspells back up. They pass the turn. We draw a Slip out the back, which is awesome for our Furies or our Subtlety. They activate the Relic of Genesis, they get rid of the Scalding Tarn, they pass, untap, play another Blast Zone, and then I decide, you know what, screw it. I want to get a clock going, I want to hard cast this Subtlety, the only thing that they can do is really Lightning Bolt it, we have a Force of Negation to protect it on the end step, if we untap, we have a Slip out the back, it's looking pretty good for us. We untap, we draw a Ledger Shredder, we enter combat, we attack for three, we then proceed to play the Letter Shredder, which is awesome because we get to hold up the Force of Negation and the Slip out the back. The opponent goes to their turn, they untap, they draw, and then they cast a Lightning Bolt targeting Ledger Shredder. So we can either Force of Negation or Slip out the back, but I think I want to get the Slip out of the back value. We cast it, Ledger Shredder is protected, the Lightning Bolt doesn't resolve. They then cast a Flame Slash targeting the Subtlety, which we let resolve because, again, I don't really care about this subtlety. We do have this Ledger Shredder, which I think is way more important, and it's probably going to win us the game as long as we hold up Counterspell and Force Negation. The opponent activates the Relic, we, they exile a card, we get to untap, we draw a Fire Ice, which could be useful in the future, we attack for two, we get our damage in, 
and then we pass the turn. They untap, they draw, they end up casting a Fury hardcasted, which we immediately counterspell. It just so happens to line up perfectly. Now we get to untap with our Ledger Shredder. The opponent activates Relic Progenitus, exiling a card. And I decide on the end step to cast the Fire of the Fire Ice. I figure that I want to end up closing this game eventually. And I want to get this Ledger Shredder trigger because the second Fury is really not doing anything for me. I would rather have another blue spell or a land or anything to further progress this game. We end up drawing a counter spell, which is exactly what I was asking for. We discard the Fury, we let the fire resolve, and now we go to untap. We draw a Flooded Strand, we play the Flooded Strand, enter combat, attack for three, and then we pass the turn. Put it untaps, and they attempt to Lightning Bolt, and then Fury the Ledger Shredder. What are the odds that we just so happen to have this counter spell? We resolve our Ledger Shredder trigger, we discard the Fury, we counter spell the Fury, the opponent activates the Relic of Progenitus, and then they pass the turn. We untap, we draw a slip out the back, we enter combat, we hit them for four. I realize now that I should have played the Ragavan dashed, but I think I was just so excited that we just cast the Ragavan on main phase two, they exile the Relic of Progenitus, they dash their own Ragavan, they go to combat, we immediately trade, and then they concede. Off to game number two. So sideboarding for match number five, I wasn't entirely sure. I ended up just cutting two Fire Ice for two Change the Equation. Their entire deck is red spells, so Change the Equation is pretty much going to hit everything. And I feel like all of my cards are so good that... I didn't really want to change very much. Game number two, match five, we're on the draw. Our opening hand is pretty dang good. We have a turn one Ragavan. We have a subtlety with the Essence Flux back up. We're living large. The opponent plays a Mountain and then plays a Relic of Progenitus in the first turn. It does nothing. They pass. We untap. We draw a Force of Negation. We cast the Ragavan. We say go. The opponent untaps and then plays a Pyrite Spellbomb which is actually really awkward. The only answer that we have for it is this Force Negation, and I was really hoping that they would just like cast a Lightning Bolt and we could Force Negation it, but I decide, well, if this Pyrate Spellbomb is going to resolve, then it's going to end up killing the Ragavan, so I might as well Force this. The Force Negation resolves, and then they proceed to have the Lightning Bolt as well, and then they activate the Relic of Progenitus. Super, super annoying. So they pass the turn, we untap, we draw a Force of Negation, we cast the second Ragavan with the Force of Negation back up, and then we pass the turn. The opponent untaps, they draw, they play a Blast Zone, and then they dash their own Ragavan. I decide that I'm going to subtlety this Ragavan because I really want to connect with mine. I want to get this Expressive Iteration going. We're both at two cards in hand, but this Expressive Iteration is going to draw us more cards. We're probably going to be ahead after this. The Salty resolves, they put Ragavan on top, they activate the Relic, they crack the Relic, they hard cast a Fury to kill my Ragavan, which feels really aggressive. They have one card in hand, we untap, we draw a Ledger Shredder, we have to pass because we can't do anything. They untap, they play a land, they pass the turn, which is great for us, we're really hoping they have nothing. We draw a snow-covered island, we're then allowed to play our Ledger Shredder. They end up activating the Blasto to put a counter on it, which makes a lot of sense. They want to kill the Ledger Shredder. We pass the turn, they untap, they draw, they have a Lightning Bolt, they Lightning Bolt the Ledger Shredder. I choose to not force negation it, because they do have the Blast Zone. We cast an Expressive Iteration, we get a counter spell into hand, we put a land into the Exile, we put the land into play, we pass the turn. The opponent then proceeds to do nothing, pass the turn, we draw, we play a land, we pass the turn. Then they dash a Ragavan. I feel like I have to counter spell this, I don't want them to connect. We cast the counter spell, they proceed to pass the turn once again. We untap, we draw an Expressive Iteration, probably the best draw in our deck. We find a change the equation for the hand, we put a lightning bolt to exile, we're gonna deal three to them, we might as well, it's better than a land. We play a land for a turn, we pass the turn with a change the equation and force negation back up. They untap, they play another field of ruin, they pass the turn. I decide to crack the scolding tarns on the end step, I kinda wanna thin the deck, I'm at 20, I really don't wanna draw any lands. And then while we're tapped out, they decide to field of ruin us, which is super interesting. We get the second basic, we untap, we draw a subtlety, which is great. Now we actually have a threat, we might be able to do something against them. They end up field of ruining, we don't have any basics to get. They untap, they pass the turn, 
we untap, we play a Fiery Islet, we pass the turn. The opponent draws, they play a Den of the Bugbear tapped. We go to the end step, we crack the Fiery Islet because we have four lands for a subtlety if we want it. We draw a Counterspell for our turn, we pass the turn, they untap, they draw. The opponent casts a Maze Mind Tome, a card I have not seen for a very long time, but I can't allow it to resolve because I really don't want them to draw cards, and we are pretty ahead. We cast the Change the Equation because the Change the Equation is just worse than a regular Counterspell. Change the Equation only hits specific things while Counterspell hits everything. They end up passing the turn. We untap, we draw that slip out the back, which is really nice if we can get another land for this subtlety. They untap, they draw, and they draw another Maze Mind Tome in which we hard cast the Force of Negation to use our mana efficiently. We draw another slip out the back, we proceed to pass the turn. They untap, they draw, they play a dashed Ragavan, they seem to be hitting runner after runner, and I decide this is my chance to pull the trigger. We have multiple ways of protecting the subtlety. I pitch cast the subtlety, target the Ragavan, they decide to put the Ragavan on top, I attempt to slip out the back, the subtlety, it resolves, we now get to keep this subtlety with counterspell and another slip out the back back up. We draw an Ottawara just to seal the deal. We get our damage in, we pass the turn. They untap, they dash the Ragavan, we counterspell the Ragavan. They play a Shatter Skull Smashing and pay the three life so that they can cast a Fury, which is amazing. Now we get to slip out the back the subtlety and keep it, and now it's out of Fury range, it's out of Flame Slash range, it's a 5-5, five five. it has a two turn clock. We draw a Force of Negation as a backup, we hit them for five in the air, we pass the turn, the opponent untaps, they draw, they play a Season Pyromancer, they attempt to Spike Field Hazard my subtlety, and I decide that I want to force a negation the Spike Field Hazard. It actually took me quite a bit of thinking to make that decision, but I figured that if they draw a Flame Slash, if they draw a Fury and a red card, then they're going to be able to kill the subtlety. By me casting the Force of Negation, I'm playing around a Flame Slash or Fury red card, but I'm not able to play around double burn spell. So I choose that I think it's better for me to cast the Force of Negation. They end up playing a Pirate Spell Bomb. I end up biting my nails. They play a Field of Ruin. We go to combat and they concede, giving us the 5-0-10-0 trophy. If you enjoy this kind of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and it lets me know that you like what I'm doing. If you like this deck, let me know what you would play. It's brand new. There's so many ways that you could possibly build it. I just built it this way and I just happened to get really lucky with a solid sweep. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one.